Thank you all for coming. I'm Željko Švedić. I'm founder of uh, Gembox Software and co-founder of Tesdom Software. And today I'm going to answer a question, how to price your software as a service or ordinary package software product. And I have divided my talk into a few sections. First, we are going to talk about magic of pricing. Then I'm going to give you three methods to determine the correct price. One is competition research, another one is A-B testing, and third one, uh, well, we will keep it as a secret till the moment. Uh, we'll give examples, examples, and examples, uh, conclude something in the end, and at the end of the talk, we'll have questions and answers. So first, Let's talk about why pricing is magic. You can spend few hours thinking about pricing, make some change, and then every month that your product is alive, make 10% more. So during the lifetime of your product, you can make few million dollars more. Few million dollars for a few hours of work. That feels a lot of like printing money. And that's the magic, because in IT, we spend a lot of time implementing features, new versions of a product, we have large teams of 10 people, and sometimes 10 people work on a feature for six months, they release a product, and you don't notice a bump in sales. Somebody comes and says, we need to tweak pricing here, and suddenly that product is going to make a few million dollars more. Unfortunately, it is hard to get right. Uh, what is different with software pricing compared to physical products? With physical products, we are limited by unit cost. Usually every physical item costs some amount to produce, and then we add our margin. For example, 30% on top of production costs. And that's how we determine price of the product on the shelf. However, economy of software is different because unit cost is almost zero. Because we don't actually sell software. We say sell software, but that's, that's the wrong sentence to say. We keep our software for ourselves. We sell licenses to use software, meaning that only thing with which we actually deliver to the customer is a serial key or activation key. And that costs zero to cent. So we can set any price for our software. We can price it $5, we can price it $5,000, and we have much wider range than with physical products. So uh, when I was working on Jambox, that got me thinking. I was sitting on a beach and thinking first how to how to spend more time on the beach. Uh, one of the ways to spend more time on the beach is make more money with the same software that you have. And first method I used for Gembox is competition research. It's uh, quite an easy method, quite a logical one. What you do is you use some spreadsheet software and you put all your uh, competitors here in the columns, Jambox Spreadsheet is my product, and we have a Spose Cell, Sync Fusion, Component One. And in the rows, we put the features of each of the products. In this example, our product is a .NET component for programmers to import and export Excel files. So most important features are here, and we can see which competitor supports which feature, at the bottom of comparison table, we have the price. So I have priced my product to be competitive with other products in the market. Uh, you will often see websites even doing this for you. They will make a table, they will list their product, and they will list competitors and say, we are better than our competitors, look at our features, look at our price. 
But there is a problem to this method I was not aware when I was doing it. What do you compare your product to? There are literally thousands and thousands of products which can be a replacement. Uh, and I noticed that a lot of people, when they do pricing, they make a fatal mistake. They start comparing with a wrong product. Usually they start comparing with a big company, like they compare themselves to Microsoft, to Amazon, to Apple. Like if Apple can send a cell phone for $2,000, we can also sell a phone for $2,000. Uh, and if you want to see uh, all the downfalls of this method, just call classifieds. Because every time you talk with some person on classifieds uh, selling some used car or a used TV or used piece of electronic, they will have justification of their price, usually comparing to something else. So the person will say, oh, this is 20% lower than I bought this TV for. Yes, but... Three years ago, flat TVs were much more expensive. Now you can buy cheaper TV in a store. Uh, and it's incredible what people try to uh, uh, compare themselves to. In a classifies, they compare uh, their price of their used product with the price of a new product in a store. You can return tomorrow and you get two years of warranty. Why do they do that? But we kind of have an inclination to co compare ourselves to something we aspire to. So, I was doing more thinking on a, on a different beach. And I said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a scientific approach because I'm going to A-B test the pricing page in order to find out the best price. And in theory of economics, uh, there is something which is called demand curve. Demand curve is a curve for a product which tells you at which price point what is going to be demand for the product. And your price multiplied uh, by number of customers is your revenue. So if you start with product price of 25 and you notice that 750 customers a month buy it, then you can experiment with the price, with the lower price and the higher price and see few points on this curve. And then you can interpolate and conclude what is the shape of the curve. And mathematically, you can find the point where you make the most money. So multiplication of the uh, uh, price of the product with the quantity is going to be maximum. And this makes sense. It's a scientific approach. And we use that at TestDom. For example, we use the visual website optimizer to do A-B testing. And uh, just, just for information, a website is uh, uh, our product which uh, has a pre-employment screening test, mostly for programmers. So companies use us to screen candidates for a job. And this was our old uh, pricing page, which has four plans, $1,000 plan, has 100 candidates. So to test one candidate before an interview, it's $10 per candidate. And uh, this was also the control variation, so our baseline in A-B test. And we try to reverse the pack order, so start with the most expensive one first. Uh, then we try to reverse uh, the price per candidate uh, display. So here we highlight the price per candidate and the price of the total pack for 100 candidates is in small font in the second row. Uh, and in the version 3, we added extra large pack. So this is highball price variation. And we did the A-B test. And what A-B test said is that uh, they are 97% certainty that highball price is the best one. 
Although nobody actually purchased the, the large pack when they came to our website, but when people saw the bigger pack, they were more inclined to buy $400 pack instead of $100 pack. Oh, but in your test, the last month's street. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and this is only for first pack size. So uh, uh, this is 60, 90% increase for first pack size people buy. So this method is working, but also there is a problem. And that is that A-B testing is only useful for small changes, not for big ones. Because A-B testing will tell you how to tweak the current price list or the current price to lower it a bit, make it a little bit higher, present your price list in a different way. But it will not tell you that you are looking at a completely wrong curve. Because when you change your marketing materials, when you change your product, when you uh, change your value proposition, the curve changes. Different products have different curves. So you may be optimizing for local optimum, like what is the best price for this thing we have, but A-B testing will not suggest you, hey, you completely need to change how you present your product. And that leads to method number three, the magical method. I found out about this while I was browsing internet late in the night and I was surfing internet. I found a blog post and on that blog post, one wise old man said, price is a part of market positioning. And at first, I didn't understand what the wise man was saying. And I actually, I forgot what was the name of the author and I forgot what was the name of the blog. I tried to find it, I couldn't find it. But it was some wise, wise guy on internet. And that got me thinking, that got me thinking and researching. And I concluded this advice is the most useful one. Why? Because price list doesn't exist in a vacuum. It exists in a funnel. So we have target audience that we uh, push our marketing uh, message to. They read part of our marketing materials and when they are ready to buy, they come to price list. If they are satisfied with the price, they convert to customers. If they are not satisfied with the price, they, they leave the website. And price can be completely different depending on the top of the funnel. So this, all three things are part of market positioning. And for an example, I will give you a product which doesn't have anything to do with software. You all know it. It is office chairs. So office chairs are a commodity now. On AliExpress, you can find office chairs for below $70, which are uh, height adjustable, which have uh, uh, roller wheels, which come in many shapes and colors. Okay, so if office chairs are produced for less than $17, why is that that some producers are able to sell their chairs for more than a thousand dollars. It sounds like uh, these guys, Pinalis, should be out of business, but they are not. They are quite successful. And we can understand that if we take a look at difference in the funnel. So, people who come to AliExpress are discount buyers. You load AliExpress on your computer when you want to buy something on a discount, right? On the other hand, people who buy Spinalis chairs are professionals with back pain. Uh, notice, notice the marketing. This is dent. This is for dental offices. So when you are professional with back pain, then you go for this chair. Uh, AliExpress products all label themselves as an office chair. 
while Spinalis uh, uh, labels them as therapeutic chair, and they even have some uh, medical certificate to prove they are working. And then, as a last step, uh, commodity office chairs on AliExpress are below $70, and uh, special chairs for people with back pain are more than $1,000. So this is, this is a difference in physical products only. When we go to software, the range is going to be much bigger. Uh, so let's reiterate. What is market positioning? We have pricing. We also have target audience. This is the people we will try to reach with our marketing. And to reach people, we use marketing channels. Different marketing channels have different price ex expectations. So people who come to App Store have completely different expectation for price of software than people who find out about that software on IT conference. Uh, another part of marketing positioning is marketing materials which you need to think of in advance how they are going to position the product. And if you state in your marketing materials, we have the most features, you should put a high price. If you state in your marketing materials, we have an affordable solution, you should give a low price. So price is just one more ma marketing message you are going to give. But there is a difference because most of the marketing materials are not going to be read by our customers because people online, they just skim the text and search for important stuff. But they always stop their eyes on the price. And let's give it a test. Is this watch real or fake? <laughs> so. Marketing material says is Patek Philippe, that's a Swiss manufacturer of luxury watches. It's fully diamond and gold, right? But they are like two characters which are out of place. The price is $19 on a discount and it's free shipping. What do you think? Is it real Patek Philippe or it's not? Same for this one, you have four digits wrong, not one. Not really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> So I could uh, put my hand in fire that this is a fake. But if the price was $19,000, well, then I would think about it. So people always notice the price. It's a quite a strong marketing statement. There are many marketing channels. There are many marketing channels, hundreds of marketing channels. I try to group them in four categories. So let's start with a uh, uh, cheaper part of the range, consumer marketplaces. Uh, these include uh, app stores like Apple App Store, Google Play Store, if you wanna sell mobile apps. Then if you wanna say, uh, sell uh, games, you have Steam. If you are send, uh, selling uh, themes for web design or icon sets or some designer related stuff, you'll use Envato. And usually, Everything on these platforms sold to consumers is less than $50. And these platforms, each individually, have different pricing expectations. You have different pricing expectations for App Store, different pricing expectations for Envato. For uh, mobile microplaces, they even recommend you to put prices 99 cents or $4.99. So in this case, you don't have to think a lot. You just follow the recommendations. The next level is organic digital marketing, where we have price range between 50 and $1,000. How does organic digital marketing work? Well, usually founders uh, do some writing, they advertise with their friends, they write some blog articles, uh, they get some uh, free PR, uh, maybe uh, customers recommend uh, your product, and suddenly you get some SEO juice and people start coming to your website. Uh, at this price point, 
you almost always are going to put uh, your price list publicly with all the options. Because uh, what uh, is not written on the slide is as we go up in the uh, uh, chain, uh, the sales cycle gets longer and longer. On app stores, people buy instantly. Uh, on a price range fifty to thousand dollars, it takes some time, but they can also buy instantly. So they need to have decision uh, material. Uh, and uh, as you go to upper levels, it takes months or years to decide. When companies get a little bit bigger, they usually move to uh, paid digital marketing. So they have a uh, uh, marketing and inbound sales team and they do professional SEO, content marketing, and they do paid ads. Uh, I put that this range is from $1,000 to $20,000. And in this range, you can put prices both public and you can hide them usually by uh, uh, saying contact, contact us for price quote. It depends on you. And the highest level, so from $20,000 to many millions, is enterprise sales. In this level, you are going to use outbound sales where your reps are going to position your product not as a technical product, but as a complete solution to some business problem. And you're going to send your reps on conferences and advertise to a specific niche. Price is always hidden because it's expected that you negotiate the price. And they are always trying to upsell you with uh, certain add-ons and special options. So you will have a custom price. And to uh, support enterprise sales, you need to have a strong sales team and you need to have a support team, which is going to do customization, white labeling, integration, and etc. So price is completely dependent on the marketing channels that you are using. And notice that the uh, uh, difference between different uh, uh, marketing channels can be up to 20 times. So if a company starts uh, with one founder and doing organic dig digital marketing, and then at later stage goes to enterprise sales, price of the product can increase 400 times. So from that, we can conclude that only a fool would try to do this. <coughs> keep the same target audience, keep the same marketing materials, and completely change the price list to some other marketing channel. And I will uh, mention one fool. I'll give you a hint. <laughs> it's me. Uh, because when we started Testdom, we tried to, at one point, have subscription-based pricing. And we thought, OK, we are selling this uh, tests, let's try to sell them as a monthly service. People would get uh, tests inside their subscription every month and they would use us on a constant basis. We didn't know which amount of monthly subscription to charge, but we left that for customers to decide. They had a slider, I need 15 tests a month, that's $150 a month. And we thought we are smart and we are going to make more money. Unfortunately, after six months of trying, we realized our experiment is not working. And uh, that customers are just not buying subscriptions as we expected. And we had uh, a deep uh, discussions and thoughts about it. And we concluded that we made a classic uh, error or of companies which sell online. When we sell online, it's very easy to forget who is our customers, right? Because if you work, for example, at a tool store, 
you will exactly know who your customers are. They will come to you, they will complain about their problems. When you offer them one product, they will tell, oh, this is too expensive. If they are satisfied with your shop, they will come again. You can go to any specialty store and ask a clerk and he will be or she able to describe a typical customer. On internet, we often don't have a clue who the person visiting our website is. And what happened to us is that we forgot who was visiting our website, who was our target uh, user. So, our target user is somebody who has an immediate problem. They have, for example, a job ad for a database programmer or database admin, and they want to find online tests to screen for their SQL knowledge. They search for SQL online test, and they find us on the first page of Google. So far, so great. They click it. Then they come to our website where we explain what is SQL online test. It tests the knowledge, uh, uh, SQL to in interface and uh, efficiency. All sounds great. And there is even a nice example of a question which demonstrates the, the power of our platform and what kind of questions do we offer. So marketing material, although not very flashy, is also appropriate. And then they came to a pricing page, part of which was a pricing slider where they select which amount they want to pay monthly. And if they selected $100 a month, that means they would pay $1,200 annually. So let's go back. We have somebody who has six developers they need to screen right now. They are searching for online solution and now they need to commit for $1,200 a, a year. They are going to say, no way, I will do it myself or just grab some uh, questions online and create my own test. If they were searching for a company-wide screening solution, they wouldn't use this keyword. They would use uh, programmer screening for small and medium business, most uh, popular uh, online screening companies, or for some other keyword. As soon as they used this keyword, they were just searching to buy a specific test, not a monthly subscription. And you know what? Customers are not stupid. Customers are not stupid. They figure out the way very, very quickly. So what we uh, saw is that they would buy a monthly subscription, the lowest one, of course, $100. And then as soon as their testing needs were over, they would churn. Like first month, half of the people will cancel, then even more, then even more. So after, after three months, less than third people were still on a $100 subscription. And uh, people are not stupid. People do the same thing with streaming services like Netflix or HBO Go. They have a list of movies and series they want to watch. They get a service for $10 a month. They binge watch everything, then they cancel. That is not SaaS. That is not recurring revenue. That is one-time revenue. So we switch back to pack pricing and we, we plan how we are going to, in the future, migrate to different pricing model. But uh, not everything was bad. We also did some meaningful stuff. One experiment we did is to create a Jambox bundle. Jambox sells office uh, uh, file components. So, for example, Jambox spreadsheet can import to many different spreadsheet formats, XLS, XLS6, OpenOffice Calc, uh, CSV, and uh, similar formats. And we had five products, and each of them had a separate price list. So if a customer needed two products, they needed to buy them separately. This was the price list. And then uh, a colleague of mine, Yosef, he said, yeah, let's try to make a bundle, like all components, in one pack, which is discounted. So five components, and these are the two main components that make money. 
and uh, these three don't sell so well. So you can interpret this uh, price of a bundle in a both positive and negative way. You can say, oh, I get five, five uh, uh, components all for two and a half price of one. Or you can interpret, ah, I just don't need uh, all the components, uh, I will buy a single one. So for some customers, it's a good value. For some customers, it's not. And we were curious what is going to happen. And what happened is that when we introduced the bundle, that's the green one, it uh, uh, decreased slightly the sales of both Gembox spreadsheet and Gembox document, two main component. So that was cannibalization of, of a, a, a side product. But at, after a, a year, sales of a bundle were on a level with those two top selling components. And we did the calculation and our calculation said that every month we're making $12,000 more. And we were laughing at that because at Gembox, sometimes we had spent six months working on a feature like pivot tables or charts, and we didn't see a bump in sales. And uh, one day somebody had an idea, we spent a week to package everything. There was no new code. We, ju we just packaged all components in one new uh, file and make a separate uh, uh, marketing and pricing page. And now every month we get $12,000 more. So it feels like magic. It feels like printing money. Uh, before I go to the next two examples, uh, let's just uh, reiterate what makes enterprise sales different. In enterprise sales, prices need to be multiples of package prices. They need to be like that because enterprise sales costs a lot. You uh, have a sales team, which is well paid, works on bonuses, and it takes them ages to sell something. The more expensive product, the longer it takes them. Sometimes the sales cycle is few, few years, and then your prospect tells you they decide to go to some other enterprise solution. So the price of the product needs to cover all that uh, waiting. Prices are hidden and you negotiate them. And what is interesting is that I have uh, uh, seen a pattern on internet that uh, a lot of uh, big private equity or venture capital will buy small successful products and then they are going to turn them into enterprise products overnight. So there you can see that thing with market positioning in real life, in real time. And it's quite a thing to see. So let me go with the first example. Assembla is a project management tool similar to Jira. And we use that in a Gembox. We started with a team of five people and in 2012 it was $185 for a year of use of the tool. So that was quite affordable. Then in May 2060, Assembler was purchased by Scaleworks, which is a venture equity provider. And soon enough, they changed the price list and we were on a legacy plan, which was not ideal. Uh, in 2018, for 14 people, now we are paying $1,000. We are paying $1,000. But still, it was manageable. And then we said, hey, can we just add one more user to our account? So we have 15 users on account. And they said, no, we cannot do that on a legacy plan. You need to switch to a new plan. And we said, okay, send us an offer. And they send us an offer, $5,200 a year. So that's uh, nine times price increase from 2012. And uh, well, we didn't feel happy about it. And then we migrated from Assembla to Jira and now we're on a Jira. So we pay 140 uh, a month for 19 people, right? But this is still 
a small example because it's only one order of magnitude. Look at the next example. If you do A-B testing, you must have heard of Optimizely. Optimizely uh, was super popular A-B testing tool, which had a free and starter plan. So they started from the bottom. You could register and use a free plan for something if you are not big. Then in October 2015, Optimizely raised $58 million in Series C, which was led by Index Ventures, with participation, participation from all these venture capital funds. So they all together put $58 million on a pile and put into Optimize. And when you see this kind of news for a tool you use, you can only say, ouch. Because when people put so much money in a company, they want to get their value back. So. Uh, what they did is they increased their prices 42 times. They, they killed the free plan and they increased the prices for current customers 42 times. And the internet exploded, people were complaining, people were writing uh, blog posts, but uh, nothing really changed that. Like uh, here, uh, Leonard on Twitter is uh, saying he had a call uh, with a customer. They were paying $400 a month. New price, new offer they got from Optimizely was $200,000 a year. So that is how it goes in the world of enterprise pricing. Uh, I don't know if this is a good example or a bad example. Maybe it's a bad example because they started at a wrong market position and then they switch to completely different uh, uh, market position and completely different market channel. So maybe that was not good. But the, on the other hand side, when they were on uh, organic digital marketing, everybody was advertising them because they were free. So everybody was linking to Optimizely, everybody was mentioning Optimizely in reviews, uh, in forums, they had a lot of free marketing. And then when they were number one A-B testing tool, then they switched to enterprise pricing. But then everybody knew about them. So I don't know if this is a good strategy or a bad strategy. And I want to leave you with uh, four conclusions. First the one is Remember that product positioning includes target audience, marketing materials, and pricing. All these three things work in unison. And that is the thing you need to decide first for your product. The second is your customers decide where you're positioned in a market, not you. People are not stupid. Uh, people uh, uh, realize that a lot of the stuff we write online is marketing bullshit. In our case, we try to convert our customers to subscription and it didn't work. Customers find another way. So it doesn't matter what you write in your marketing materials. It only matters how customers perceive you in the end. After marketing positioning is done, compare your pricing with alternatives your customers compare you to. This is very important because I purposely wrote alternatives, not other software, because alternative can be something which is not software. Alternative can be, oh, I'm going to do that manually instead of buying software. Alternative can be, I'm going to hire another person to do that manually instead of buying software. An example of uh, alternative is uh, a case of EU banana tax. Bananas were taxed very high in European Union to protect European uh, uh, producers, which sounds strange, 
bananas, yes, because we don't produce bananas in the European Union. But they concluded that if the bananas are cheap, nobody is buying apples. And if the bananas are expensive, they're buying apples. So apples are a replacement product for bananas. And then they got sued by VTO, and yeah, it's, it's a long legal battle about banana tax. Uh, so alternative can be something else than the software, and you need to find out what is alternative in the mind of your customers. As a last step, A-B test your pricing page, and you can fine tune your pricing page, uh, make it a little bit more expensive, uh, less expensive, change the way how you present pricing, have few plans, have only one plan. Uh, you can tweak all of that with A-B testing, but when you have fixed marketing materials and fixed target audience. Uh, well, I'm, I may also uh, add a fifth advice, which is if you want to uh, get good advice about pricing, talk with somebody who was in the same market segment as you. I'm maybe not the best person to give advice on uh, enterprise pricing because I never sold uh, products at enterprise pricing level. And people who work their whole lives in uh, enterprise pricing uh, will probably not give you a good advice if you are selling your product using organic uh, uh, digital marketing. Like they will completely fail to understand how are you able to make money on a product which is $100. So talk with somebody who is in the same marketing segment and uses similar marketing channels. Uh, that is all from me. Thank you very much.